Books can be very powerful things. Now, you would expect someone like me to say something like that, wouldn't you? But in this case, I've got a story that actually really illustrates it. Now, the Archbishop of Canterbury, George Carey, made history when he became the first Archbishop of Canterbury to actually write a memoir after his retirement. He retired in 2002, so he was Archbishop of Canterbury from 1991 to 2002, and then he released this memoir in 2004. Now, this isn't about the memoir. This is about the book tour and the actual interviews he gave when he was actually plugging his book. Now, the reason why that was so important was it was what he said in those interviews plugging his book that actually helped facilitate the then Prince Charles and Camilla being able to get married with the Queen's blessing. So I'm going to take you back to 2000. Now, as you know, Diana actually died in 1997 and Camilla was really still copying a whole lot of flack at around the year 2000. And so George Kerry actually reached out as Archbishop of Canterbury and he wished to speak to her and to be of some support and solace to her if he could be. So he managed to get hold of his son's house so that they could meet without anyone seeing or knowing. And he sent a message to Camilla and said, I would really like to have a conversation with you. And she was eager. So she turned up at this house and I'm going to describe to you what happened. By the way, his book is called Know the Truth by George Carey. I haven't read the book yet, so I'm not recommending it in this video. I'm just sort of telling you about the book tour. So he says in this meeting with Camilla, he says, we talked about her relationship with Charles going way back to when they were teenagers. And after she left, I said, well, there is no way I could ever treat her as other than a really nice human being who's deeply in love with Charles. And then he goes on to say that it really affected him when he met her. He was convinced that she was a really good person. And so that prompted him from that year in 2000 to start to talk to people behind the scenes. And one of the people he was talking to behind the scenes was actually Queen Elizabeth II. Now, Queen Elizabeth II was in between a rock and a hard place because her mother, the Queen Mother, had an icy disdain for Camilla, absolutely couldn't stand her, wouldn't hear her name in her presence. It, no one could ever even refer to anything about her in any way. If Camilla was going to be anywhere near a function or an occasion, the Queen Mother would not attend. Now, the Queen Mother was known for being able to hold a really good grudge. She, she had a grudge, but they said she, was, she had this steeliness. It's sort of steel inside a velvet glove is often said about her. And she had the same sort of steely disdain and resolve about Wallace Simpson, as you know. And so pretty much once she'd made up her mind that you were a bad egg, then you stayed a bad egg for the rest of her life. And so the Queen was caught sort of, she said to Charles, there is no way I can ever sanction your marriage to Camilla while my mother is alive. I, it, she just couldn't go against her mother in that way. So for Archbishop George Kerry to actually start approaching the Queen, trying to soften relations, trying to try and find some way forward for Charles and Camilla, he was a very brave man. But he did make some inroads because in 2000, the Queen actually agreed to attend something at Highgrove. It was a lunch. I think it was for the King of Spain. And uh, the Queen agreed to attend. And that was the first, and Camilla was going to attend. But the Queen did say that she wouldn't be introduced to Camilla. So even though they were at the same luncheon, and there was a lot of people there, their paths didn't meet other than a brief nod of acknowledgement. And then only two short weeks after that, Camilla's hope was deflated. <laughs> their relationships were thawing because that was when they had that huge party of the decades where they were celebrating all the royal birthdays at Buckingham Palace and Camilla wasn't invited, but the Queen Mother's favourite, Andrew Parker Bowles, 
was. So in 2002, the Archbishop of Canterbury went to see the Queen because he was actually retiring and she rather testily said, well, I can never retire. You know, I think she was a little bit jealous, the fact that these people could actually retire and go off and do what they wanted to do because, as we know, kings and queens have to work till they drop, basically. So he tried to make this softening of relations between Camilla and the Queen, but he hadn't been overly successful, and it was because of the Queen Mother. But in 2002, the same year that George Kerry actually retired from being Archbishop of Canterbury, the Queen Mother died. Now you would think, great, it's on, it's happening. But as you know, it took another three years before the then Prince Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles could actually tie the knot. The defining turning moment was when George Kerry was actually doing the promo tour for his book because he kept bringing up about the then Prince Charles and Camilla and saying in his opinion that he thinks that they should be able to get married. And, you know, being their supporters and cheerleaders and pointing out why and saying that Prince Charles should be allowed to be happy and should be allowed to marry the woman he's always loved. And, you know, he, he and every time he would say this, of course, it would make headlines. And the headlines were starting to seep through to Buckingham Palace. And the headlines were also starting to put a little bit of delicate, polite pressure on the Queen. So it was in Christmas 2004 at Sandringham that the Queen finally gave permission to Prince Charles to propose to Camilla. And I would say it was really a job well done, Archbishop. (laughs) You did a good job influencing that decision. And as we can see from the point of their marriage from 2005 to when the Queen died, you can actually see that Camilla became a very well-trusted member of the family by Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth II, uh, firmly part of the family and often in the end did engagements with Queen Elizabeth II and was valued and her company was enjoyed. So I thought it was just fascinating that a book tour And a publicity interviews about a book, Know the Truth, by George Kerry, could have ended up in such a way and with quite a happy ending for everyone concerned. Let me know what you think down below and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.